I learned it from the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by, by Dr. Stephen Covey. And he has a whole chapter on delegation. So check that out if, if you know, you're listening to this and you're like, man, that's a really good concept. That It comes from that book. And that to me is one of my, it's one of my favorite books on just how to be an effective leader, effective founder, effective person. Uh, there's a whole chapter on that. Mm, it's good. What other books are so good you've read them twice? You, you know, something I struggle with is like trying to trying to pick up, get my hands on everything and consume everything uh, versus just like picking five books and just like listening to them or reading them over and over again. Like I, I think like we learn more uh, in a given month uh, in terms of like consuming content than probably a person 40 years ago learned in a year or maybe 10. So sometimes I struggle with that. Um, so to your point, uh, Seven Habits Highly Effective People is one of those books I listen to on Audible or try to read at least once a year. E-Myth by Michael Gerber is another one. Uh, Good to Great uh, is, is a timeless business book and the concept of the flywheel effect. That, And so I think if you can just get your, your hands on maybe three, four, five books, make those the core of like your philosophy and belief systems and, and, and how you approach life and, and business, and then maybe rotate another four or five in, you know, on an ongoing basis, I think can be helpful. But I think, I think you have to have like that course set and that you revisit and you're learning over and over and over again versus just like picking up all the new stuff and it goes in one ear, not the other. That, that's, that, that, that's what I'm, that's the way I've experienced it. Like I, I, I've, I try to read at least a book a month, sometimes two. And then like last year, there's only a couple that really stick out, you know? And so that's that's what I'm trying to work on now is like honing like what are those what are those core like sets of 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 knowledge and information and then like rotating in some new stuff and having a balance between the two. That's but good. It's tough. That's good. That's super good advice for anybody. And I, I really agree with that. Finding your foundational materials of what you believe. And I think that that also plays into who you want to be as an entrepreneur, because there's more than one way to skin that cat. You can be right. um, you know, there's if you surround yourself with knowledge, people, experiences, et cetera, that are only mapped around VC funded businesses, like I have a friend that, that is in that world, they're absolutely killing it right now in the, uh, in the transportation and factoring business. And like his whole world is all around that. Everything yeah. is like high growth, high cash, explode the business, sell it for a billy, get out. And yeah. then you have the other side of that coin, which I would put myself in that camp of where I'm around a lot of small business owners who are building self-funded businesses that eventually will probably sell to PE someday, or you know maybe hold and continue to build uh, other businesses with the equity I put in with that business and use it as kind of a machine to then point at the other ones. And so I think that's a really good point that you know you're not just the average of the five people you hang around. You will become the average of what you consume, and yeah. that's a it's a good way of putting that. I, I like the way you have illustrated those two worlds. And I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. Yeah. I think you have to go all in on on one though. And yes. you have to like embody <laughs> and pick. Like it almost doesn't matter which you pick, but you need to pick one and go all in on it. You can't like dabble in one and then dabble in the other. And uh and and so I, I like that I like the how you put that. And then the other thing is is over like the last decade, making this transition from blue collar entrepreneur to tech entrepreneur. There's been about a dozen or maybe 20 or 30 different people that have mentored me asynchronously, mm. meaning like I have consumed everything they have put out on YouTube, every yeah. like keynote they ever made. Who, who are those people? Every, I'm so curious. Uh, tra Travis Kalanick, the CEO, uh, co-founder of, uh, of Uber before yeah. he was forced, forced out, um, is a guy that I learned a lot lot from there's actually a show coming out about him on uh on hulu called uh, super pumped uh no which i don't way. think paints him in a yeah i don't think paints him in a very good light to be honest but That's but uh, i mean that was somebody who i learned a lot from brian chesky ceo of, of of airbnb um but then but then going like long tail like who are the people that these guys and, and gals hired like at the practitioner level like who was head of growth at at Pinterest and in Grubhub in the That's early good. days, like, you know, who was head of growth? And like, let me listen to what this guy's putting out. And and uh, it's, it's a it's a, and then you know, it's a guy by the name of Casey Winters. And and this guy talks about SEO for marketplaces, 
And that's the guy I need to learn from. He's he's talking about how to build an SEO team, how to execute uh, for organic traffic when building a marketplace. And I mean, literally, this dude's done it. So I, I have I have learned so much from this this guy, another dude named Andrew Chen, who is was head of growth at Uber, who's now a venture capitalist. Uh, he just he just wrote a book called the uh, the Cold Start Problem, which is really good about how do you get over the cold start in a marketplace. Mm. So so. Uh, I think you can be mentored and be the average of five people, even though maybe you've never met them. Totally. Um, you yeah. know, in terms of like consuming everything they have put out and, <laughs> and going to YouTube University and, and finding their stuff. What That's a time funny. to be alive. Dude, 100%. When I was, uh, so I was doing door to door sales, selling commodity risk management services for my good friends here in Lincoln. And um, in that process, I basically became asynchronously mentored by Andy Frazella, Gary V, Ed Milet, and let's see who else. It was primarily those three for like a long time, like every and, single and they episode. they probably helped you level up your thinking, level up your goal setting, level up the way you look at life. I mean, you know, 20 years ago when I was first getting started as a, as a founder, we didn't have access to people that were mm -hmm. at a different level than we were. You know, you had your little like local community and your local networking. And that was, you know, maybe you go to a conference, but, but uh, literally like you would have to buy like CDs and tapes. Tony Robbins, bro. The books yeah. on tape. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, good. there's, there's no excuse these days. There really no. isn't. No, there's really not. I actually have a really, uh, really good question for you on that note about reading about Brian Chesky and, uh, Travis and all those guys from when they were like pre IPO. Are you reading like their S1s and 10K paperwork to actually understand pre-IPO what they were looking like or what 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 all are you studying from them when you start? The earlier the better. Gotcha. Uh, is 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 what I what I have found is, you know, listening to a talk today, listening to Brian Chesky talk about how he is running Airbnb today, he might as well be on Pluto compared to where I'm at because I mean they're it's a hundred billion dollar company. Yeah. I want to know what were the things Brian did when the team was 10, 20, 30, first hundred people. Mm -hmm. Like those are the talks I want to listen to. That's good. Uh, because that's the stage of that, the game that I'm at. You know, we're, we're at $30 million a year in revenue. I want to listen to the guy who's at a hundred million dollars because that's where I'm trying to get to. Um, the guy that's at, 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 that's at 10 billion. Sure. It's interesting. And sure, there's a couple, probably a couple things that I can learn, but it's not applicable to where I'm at and what stage of the game that I'm at. So I think when you're trying to consume uh, content and learn from, from folks asynchronously, try to like figure out what level of the video game you're at. If you're at level three, then then look at look at people at levels four, five, and six. Yeah. Listen to what they're putting out, read their stuff, their blog posts, and then and then reevaluate on a on a rolling basis.